Hello there my friends, welcome to my another video. This time we are going to build a Russian IS-3 tank from Trumpeter in 1 to 70 seconds scale. Now I am experimenting with a new perspective for my video, so um, let me know down in the comments if you will like this more than my previous videos. Anyway, when, when you look inside of the kit, you can see that it, it has quite a lot of really nice parts. Um, this is a really old kit and I was expecting uh, rubber tracks, but as you can see, you get um, both the uh, one-piece tracks and also link and length tracks. Um, I don't know why this is, it's probably a rebox because the new var variants do have these tracks, but I decided to go with the single piece ones in case next time I buy any vehicle with a similar suspension it still has the rubber tracks. Um, you also get included er, wires that you can use for the handles on the turret since there is a lot of handles there, um, which is quite a nice um, addition. Anyway, I start um, assembling the model, since I went with the single piece tracks, the only thing I need to do is uh, remove some wheels and glue them into the tracks. These do have pins for a correct um, orientation, even though I don't really understand why, since they are essentially identical and they are wheels, so there isn't... Uh, such a thing as a correct um, orientation, but they do have pins, so you should be careful. Put them on correctly. Anyway, as you can see, the single piece tracks look really nice. This is one thing I really love about Trumpeter. Their single piece tracks are just amazing. I decided to remove the um, front mud guards, and as you will see uh, during the entire video, I will make quite a lot of modification to this uh, IS freeze. Anyway, uh, after I uh, put the lower and upper hull together, I found out that even though it's not, it fits really nicely, it's really gappy around the mudguard, so what I decided to do was use some Tamiya white putty to fill all of the gaps. This wasn't particularly hard, but um, I managed to get some putty accidentally on parts where I didn't want it, so I just wiped it out with my finger since that seemed to be the best idea. As you can see, on the upper front plate there is almost no uh, detail, this is seen because the, the model itself is really old. Um, so I started adding some of the missing detail uh, on the upper front plate, you can see where the lower plate and upper plate meet, and on the real vehicle there is a flame cut there and also welds. So I decided to recreate this flame cut texture by um, first scribing uh, some guidelines where it should go and then I just uh, sliced the parts to create the flame cut texture. Then I also created a um, cast texture because this part was apparently cast, at least that's what my reference um, images show. I do this with the same method I used on the T-34 turret. I put some glue onto the parts I want cast and then I uh, stipple them with an old brush. The glue dilutes the plastic a little bit and creates a nice texture. And then I started adding the welds on the upper front plate. Now these were made with the same stretch sprue method I used on the Tiger video. Um, essentially what stretch sprue me uh, method is, you take a sprue and you stretch it above a flame using its heat and then you glue it onto the place where you would like a weld to be and then you um, make several little cuts into this. Uh, sprue to create the weld texture. This is quite oversized in this scale and doesn't look particularly the best. Um, I would probably rather use it in 1 to 35th scale, it should look better there. Um, but I wanted to add this texture and I think it still looks pretty good even though it's a little out of scale. It brings a little more interest to this vehicle, which is what I was going for because um, Real life IS-3 is quite boring with its um, service life and everything, so yeah. <laughs> now I was just finishing the lower 
uh, well the hull uh, you have to make sure you uh, clean up the barrels properly so there are no mold lines there and then I started working on the turret um, and I noticed uh, the turret has quite a really good uh, cast texture so I wasn't replacing this one and also the holes for the wires are pre-drilled but not completely true so what I did was using my hobby knife I drilled this out um, this was a mistake I should have used the drill bit because I broke the tip of the hobby knife and it was my last good uh, blade <laughs> so I'll have to buy new ones and um, I don't have a drill bit so it was kind of my only option now if you buy this model as well I uh, I would uh, recommend cutting the wires that were supplied uh, at least in half because um, if you push them in enough to look realistic uh, the turret won't fit together because they will be in the way from the other side so either you cut them or you don't drill the holes and just glue them on like that while cutting them because that would just stick out too much um, but I didn't do this and you will see how this just made the uh, the you know made it look a little bit bad and even though I um tried my best to fit the turrets together they didn't uh, fit completely well so I had to fill a lot of gaps with putty um, this wouldn't be really bad if I was making my own texture but I really like this texture so I was kind of upset that I covered it that's why I later still stippled the still soft uh, putty with uh, a, the same stiff brush just to give back some of the texture and kind of blend the two halves together just so you don't really see that they were from two parts Here you can see me stippling uh, the soft putty with a stiff brush. Now this created a decent uh, looking texture. I did blend the two halves together and that's the most important part and I quite like the result anyway. Now after finishing the assembly of the vehicle I realized that as I've mentioned the real life um, operational history of the vehicle was um, quite boring I would say so I um, decided I would make it a little bit more interesting and less realistic which would uh, open a lot of more opportunities for a diorama. So what I did was um, I got inspired by the World of Tanks 3D styles. Uh, now I'm not doing what the what Plasmo did for example with his uh, mouse where he basically uh, recreated the uh, 3D style because I don't think I would be able to recreate it and the IS3 has one of the more boring 3D styles I would think, say so I just got inspired by 3D styles on the IS4 and uh, T10 in World of Tanks and um, I added some night vision devices to the vehicle and also some smoke launchers which I think brings a decent amount of interest. Now this is completely fictional, this was never done to the real vehicle um, but you know it allows me to uh, do something less realistic but more interesting with it. I hope you understand that. Uh, but um, if this hurts you uh, just don't look I guess. <laughs> Now as you can see this tank looks a little more interesting and it's going um, 
to give me a lot more opportunities for an interesting diorama. I guess. I don't know. I, I really like the look of the um, smoke launchers. Anyway, then I uh, decided to add some damage as well. This is the same method as I used in the Tiger again. Um, I essentially just drill out a shallow hole where I would like the uh, shell impact, then I fill it with putty, and once the putty kind of dries out, I push it out with a um, back of my brush, and the pushed out somewhat dried putty creates a um, pushed out steel effect. Anyway, this is going to be it for um, today's video. Uh, I ho really hope you enjoyed. It was it's a shorter video, but with a lot more information. As I've said, I want to make more part videos so I can explain stuff a little better. Um, the diorama I mentioned in the T34 video is coming, but it's taking a little while, so I decided to release this um, in the meantime. Uh, next video is going to be a painting video of this, and then I will release the diorama. And after that is going to be another Russian vehicle, because um, I really like them, and then I will try doing something different. But that's in quite a far future so for now um thank you for watching uh if you enjoyed this video please consider subscribing it will help me out a ton with um, motivation and everything and if you'd like to support me financially you can go over to my patreon in the description once again thank you for watching and i um will see you in the next video